Hello guys, welcome back. Today's video isn't really a decoding video, or a picking video, but uh, we have a lock here that has a little bit of a story, and um, I'm going to tell you that story in a moment. But this lock, first of all, is a pretty common kind of lock. It's a cable lock, and uh, used mostly for locking up bikes. And these are probably used more by primary school children. Um, they're really not that secure, and there has been an outcry about them, um, because they are very easy to break into. These cables can be just cut through very easily. Um, and I bought this probably five or six years ago um, when I was a lock collector. And this was before I was interested in picking locks or a part of the community. Um, but I, uh, I bought this lock mostly to play around with it. I didn't really have a use for it. And I bought it from a store called Tool Station, which sell. Uh, surprisingly enough, tools and uh, DIY things. And um, I'm sorry about those birds in the background. Um, it doesn't matter what it is and when I when I start recording, there will always be an interruption. Um, hopefully you can't hear it too loudly anyway. But um, I bought this for probably five or six pounds. And believe it or not, Toolstation do still sell this lock. Um, but... Um, when I lost the combination, I could not get this open until just yesterday I actually managed to crack it. So um, I'm going to be talking a bit about this lock and how it works. Um, so to open it up, first of all, it works just like a standard lock. You turn the dial until you get the right number. And the bar opens. And so we're going to look at the way it works. Well, first of all, it is the same kind of mechanism that works in a standard padlock, a combination padlock, uh, apart from the fact that the bar does not come, or the shackle, does not come all the way out. Um, but you look in the end here, and um, we actually see a hole and also a groove up here, and uh, that's a, a slot, basically, that goes all the way to the back of the lock. And on the other half of the lock, we actually have a bar with teeth on it. And um, this bar is designed to fit in here. And that groove enables the bar to slide in. But let's say, uh, th that's only when the right combination is inserted. But if we turn just one dial, uh, one click, you can see now that that groove is blocked. Let's turn that back. The groove is open, the groove is blocked. And now the uh, the bar will not be able to to go in. And um, actually, the way this works is there's actually four of these these uh, dials. And if we look here, this bar has four um, grooves in it. And so you can imagine that when this is actually plugged into the lock, when we turn just one of those dials, it will block and it will actually get caught in one of these grooves and all it has to do is get caught in one of those grooves to actually stop the lock from opening. So we can demonstrate that here. Locked and the, the dial is now actually sitting in the groove and it will not allow the bar to be uh, removed and that's it unlocked. So again we'll try it with a different dial. Locked you can't see that, I'm sorry. I really should get a new torch, I'm sorry. Um, okay, you can't see that, but I'll demonstrate with a different dial. Again, that's locked. Uh, you can barely see that. Oh, I need to get a new torch. You can just about see the groove is blocked. And now, it's... Unblocked. Okay, I think I've proved my point there. And to change the combination in this particular lock, you um, you've got this ring here, and this ring is only exposed when the lock is open. And you have to turn this, and it's very stiff. And I think part of the reason why I actually lost the combination in the first place was because I didn't turn this far enough. Um, that feels like it's turned all the way, but it actually hasn't. You have to put some very strong force in that to turn it all the way. Uh, and you have to obviously turn it in the direction the arrow points. And now the combination can be reset. And we're going to change it to all fives. 
just like that and then you turn the wheel back and you kind of have, have to wiggle the dials and listen uh, until the thing clicks in. Now a lot of people on Toolstation were actually leaving reviews saying that um, they they managed to get locked out of this this combination lock after trying to reset the combination for the first time and I think part of the reason is that they didn't turn this dial uh, all the way and it was just that uh, some of the numbers were changing and others weren't so be careful um, now uh, how wasn't I able to decode this well usually we when we decode one of these we pull tension uh, we pull the two halves apart and that causes the teeth on the bar in here to actually bind up against these dials and uh, that enables us to feel that when we have when we've actually reached the right number it will lock in place and uh, it will actually not be able to move but uh, with this particular lock um, I had a few problems and the first one is that there's a false gate in here and there's multiple false gates and that's uh, not something that we often see in cheaper locks. And a false gate is basically where you have a dial like this, and it has, I don't know if you can quite see that, but we actually have a second groove there. And this torch is probably not helping. But you can see there's just a tiny little groove. That groove is big enough to give us the feedback um, and to, to make us think that we've actually set the right number and reached the true gate but it's actually too small to allow the bar to be pulled out so it'll still uh, give you that feedback but you won't be able to open the lock so it's tricking us and that's one of the reasons I wasn't able to decode this the other reason was that these dials, there's very little play in them especially when it's locked and um, they're very stiff to turn, I mean my fingers are still really sore from turning these these dials, so very very stiff. Um, and a lot of people were saying that actually, you know, it's it, it's hard to use this lock, and um, it's you know it's hard to get the right combination to work. And um, that's true enough. You have to make sure that the the dial is perfectly centered to allow that bar to be pulled out. And um, and that, that's a good thing though, because that means that it's going to be harder to decode. So all of these things that are seem like inconveniences are actually, uh, they are to increase the security. Um, and so how did I decode it? Well, actually I figured out after a lot of playing around with this that the last dial, um, when I turned it to 1, it gave me uh, certain feedback and it gave me uh, feedback that made me think that the that it made me uh, realize that that was the right gate. So I uh, couldn't feel any false gates in this dial, um, but I found that the number one must be the true gate. And it's hard to explain this. Um, I'm trying my best. And then what I did was I turned all the numbers to zero. And I did it the old way. I did, you know, 1001, 1002, 1003. And I got to about 1600 and it opened. So, you know, I, I managed to narrow it down to six uh, numbers only. Um, that worked for me and it was amazing that it did. After all these years, this lock has just been sitting in my drawer um, unused and I was not able to get into this. I had friends try to open this and I've tried all these years to get into this and only last night I actually managed to get into it for the first time. Um, another thing that I did try was actually turning this wheel. You can see there's a little gap in between the dial just there um, and I thought that maybe if I put a screwdriver in there uh, I'd be able to turn this ring. Now first of all it's actually so hard to turn that I doubt I'd be able to turn it far enough with the screwdriver and secondly actually when the wrong combination is inserted um, you cannot turn this ring all the way so that technique would not work so uh, a very surprising lock for for just six pounds um, 
incredible lock and a lot of people have been saying bad things about it it's actually a pretty good lock and um, a very surprising lock this isn't always the case with cheap locks and you have to be careful uh, and this is actually the bracket for it which it just holds itself in with friction I actually have a second uh, cable lock I don't really use these, I just kind of collect them. Uh, there's a second one it's by Sterling, and it has a much nicer uh, style. This bracket is actually supposed to attach onto your bike, and um, this one clicks in, and you have to depress that button in order to release the lock. Um, and this one's just held in with friction. Anyway, that was something a bit different. I hope you found it interesting. If you have got any questions, then just please do leave them below. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching, and as always, I'll see you in my next video.